class Learning a lot real fast Let's have fun We will have a blast Can you tell me how to get How to get to FYI We'll discover singular, stimulating, sensational, and educational Sesame Street on this week's episode of FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English. You got it. You got it. Hello, 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 and welcome to another exciting edition of FYI. This is a topic-based show, so you guys can come here and learn about a wide range of different topics. And if you don't see topics that interest you, which, by the way, there are over 140 episodes out right now, but I'm sure you'll find something that you enjoy, something that is your cup of tea. Normally, we use that expression in the negative. It's not my cup of tea. No es lo mío. And the opposite, we usually say, that's right up my alley, which I think you would say, es justo lo que me gusta a mí. Think about aviation. Aviation is right up my alley. Opera, well, I've been to the opera, but really it's not my cup of tea. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that opening song. I did it with TLC. TLC, Tender Loving Care, as all of these episodes. So remember, if you don't see an episode that you'd like to hear about, and I'm talking about a topic, let me know. Contact me on social media and say, hey, you should do an episode on this, that, or the other thing. And a lot of the episodes I've done have come from suggestions. So thank you for your suggestions and keep them coming, as we say. Let's take a look at the intro, as we always do. I rewrote the lyrics. Now, I am aware, consciente, that you do not have lyrics. It's la, 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 right? In Spanish, it's just like your national anthem. I mean, what is it with you guys and lyrics? What do you have against lyrics? Remember, we can say the lyrics or the words, but we don't say the letter. Well, in English, there are words. Let me give you the words, and then I'll give you my version. It starts out, sunny day, sweeping the clouds away. So sunny day, evidentemente, día soleado. Sweeping the clouds away. And to sweep es barrer, o sea, quitando las nubes de en medio. It's an irregular verb, sweep, swept, swept. So I have to start at the beginning in order to get the rhythm. Sun, sing along, sing with me. Sunny day, sweeping the clouds away. On my way to where the air is sweet. Estoy de camino a donde el aire está dulce. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? And it's sesamo in Spanish, but it's sesame. Sesame. Esa E se pronuncia como una E. E. Sesame. And we'll talk about how they got that name a little bit later on. We're going to discover so many things about this singular, stimulating, sensational, and educational show. And those were just some of the adjectives I used. Just be careful. I know in Spanish you say singular, but in English it's singular. I know in Spanish you say estimulante. In English we say stimulating. I know in Spanish you say sensacional. In English it's, your turn, sensational. And the last one is educational. I was even rhyming. I guess I had a few rhymes left over from my hip-hop episode. My cover or my version. You can say either word, a cover or a version of a song. I said funny class, clase graciosa. Remember, fun, divertido, 
funny, gracioso. I hope FYI is both to you. Then I said, learning a lot real fast. O sea, aprendiendo mucho y rapidísimo. And then I said, let's have fun. We will have a blast. Lo pasaremos en grande. We'll have a wonderful time. We'll have a ball. We'll have a blast. We'll have a whale of a time. Do you really need more ways to say that you're having fun? And then I ended up by saying, Can you tell me how to get... Now, that's original lyrics there. How to get to for your English. Really, it's how to get to Sesame Street. So, folks, are you ready to go back to your childhood? Let's find out some background information about this extremely successful show. It is a long-running and perhaps the longest-running kids show on TV. And it's not just a kids show, it's an educational kids show. Because there are a lot of kids shows out there. And it combines live action, sketch comedy, animation, and puppetry. And kids have been learning and being entertained from this show since 1969. It first aired to air is to broadcast on November 10th, 1969. And it got positive reviews for the most part. But we'll see there was some controversy as well. And we're going to take a look at that a little bit later on in the bonus episode. I just want to remind you guys, there's a bonus episode every week. So every week you get one episode that comes out. But if you are a patron, you get a second one. And depending on which level you're on, you can get vocabulary sheets with all the expressions and the vocabulary, all the structures, and you can have those forever. They are in a PDF format. And another thing, there are over 600 posts. Remember, I started my Patreon when I started this podcast. So those of you who know, those of you who have been with me since the beginning, that at first there were three posts, but now there are over 600 or near 700 posts right now that you will instantly have access to when you join our curious community on Patreon. Remember, you can get more information information at patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. And I'd like to send a shout out to all my patrons, especially my super duper students, Javier, Roberto, David, Jose Maria, Mila, Alex, and Edgar. And don't forget about my interstellar students, Isa, Paco, Diego, and Carmen. If you want to join our curious community, find out more on Patreon patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. Oh, and before I told you it was one of the longest running kids shows in the world. No, 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 no. It is one of the longest running shows in the world. Period. Period es punto. Los británicos dicen full stop. Full stop. Eh, no es tan contundente, right? Isn't it more powerful to say something, you know, period. Full stop. It's like, eh, pues has tardado bastante en decirlo. So I want you to look at that word to run. To run is to air, to broadcast. We looked at it in our theater episode. I said Les Miserables was running on Broadway for 20 years. I'm making up the number, but just to use it in context. And we all know the stars of Sesame Street. They are Jim Henson's Muppets. And what is a Muppet? Well, it's a word that Jim Henson made up. And we're going to learn a lot about Jim Henson throughout this episode. Because remember, he created Fraggle Rock and many, many other characters that we grew up with. But here's a little trivia question. Do you know how he came up with the word Muppet? It's a mix of the word marionette and puppet. Aha! So I guess the question is, whose idea was it to do a show 
called Sesame Street. Well, at first, I'll tell you, and you'll find out in the bonus part, it wasn't the original name. They had another name, but they changed it at the last minute. And we'll find out more fun facts in the bonus episode. But who came up with this idea to have an edutainment show. I love that word, educational entertainment. It's my goal for FYI. So you could say part of the reason I'm doing FYI is because of Sesame Street, because of Jim Henson. Well, the show wasn't Jim Henson's idea. So this is probably a misconception to many people. Why? Well, I thought it was his idea. No, actually, he got his start in commercials. So he was already working on TV programs and with TV people. He would do sketches. He would do commercials. I mean, remember, he had a lot of ideas. He was a visionary, but he also had to pay the bills. You got a fin de mes. So the original idea for Sesame Street came about during a 1966 dinner party. And a dinner party is una velada. And it was hosted by somebody named Joan Gans Cooney. And this is a very important name in this story because this was a producer at Channel 13 in New York City. This is a public TV station. And... One of the guests at this dinner party was Lloyd Morissette. He was an experimental educator at the Carnegie Corporation. And he posed a question to all the dinner guests. And he said, do you think television can teach anything? And something happened in Joan Gans Cooney's mind. A light bulb went off and said, hey, I don't think there's any programming on TV right now that's educational, that's not a documentary style. And she went to work with her team. And it wasn't until a while later that they decided that they were going to work with Jim Henson and his creations. Because as I said, he was already well known, but not for his Muppets, for other characters. One of the characters, Big Bird, was originally a dragon. He adapted the dragon that he used in this commercial into Big Bird when it was time to do this project. So it took three years from that dinner party until it first aired. And those were three years of research. They worked tirelessly. They worked with child psychologists. They worked with educators. They left nothing to chance. Las cosas nunca estaban al azar. Nothing was left to chance. They paid attention to every little detail. And there's an interesting story about this in a book I recommend everybody. If you have not read this book, you've got to read it. It's called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. And there's a chapter in the book that tells the story of how Sesame Street was created, all the research that went into it. And one thing, I'll, I, one thing I remember that stands out in my mind is they said, the child psychologists are they in this case, that you couldn't put puppets and kids on screen together because that could be detrimental to the children. It could traumatize them, you know, and blur the line between reality. Nevertheless, when they were doing the screen tests, they noticed that the kids paid attention the most when the puppets and the kids were interacting. And then they said, well, this is the key. This is how to get the kid's attention. And that's our client. That's our target. So a lot of times they ignored some of those experts. But everything, ev let's put it this way. They dotted their I's and crossed their T's. And it worked. And I guess it helps to work with Jim Henson. The man, the myth, the legend, 
the big kid, the dreamer. That's Jim Henson. So this was a guy who believed in this other world, this fantasy world that he created in his head. And all you have to do is look at some of his creations, the Muppets, Los Teleniecos, the Fraggle Rock crew, the Dark Crystal, Labyrinth. You remember that movie? Because normally when you think of Jim Henson, you think of the Muppets or you think of Sesame Street, but everything he touched was huge. And everything he touched just proved that his inner child was alive and kicking. And I was really lucky because I went to his birthplace. I went down to Mississippi. And I'm going to tell you about that experience, the Jim Henson experience. It's uh, in the middle of nowhere in a swamp and of course what inspired kermit the frog which you guys call la rana gustavo it took me like two years to figure that out because my name is alberto gustavo and people said like la rana gustavo and i'm like oh i'm sorry we don't have that character well yeah he's not called gustavo his name is kermit the frog but when we went down there, my wife and I, on our honeymoon, we realized how he came up with all these characters. I mean, the guy was born in the middle of nowhere. He was literally born in a swamp. And a swamp is a wet area. I think you say eh, Pantano, Cienaga, Barrizal. So he used his childhood experiences in the swamp to create a lot of these characters. And his first project or his first known project is called Sam and Friends. And this was a short form comedy TV program. And he did it from 1955 to 1961. This is when he was a freshman in su primer año at the University of Maryland. So as you can see, he was honing his skills, puliendo, honing his skills from a young age. And then finally, in 1958, he co-founded Muppets Inc. with Jane, his wife, which later became the Jim Henson Company. And he's the first one to give credit, uh, merito, to his wife because she wasn't just his life partner, but she was also his business partner. They worked together on so many things, and that's a beautiful thing because he was playing in his job and he got to work with his wife, the person he loved, and his friends. So he was a serious guy, but he believed that you have to have fun when you're working. And so many things that I apply in my classes and on my shows come from Jim Henson. And in the bonus episode, we're going to take a look at some of his coolest quotes, algunas de sus citas más chulas. Another cool milestone for Jim Henson and his crew is that they were on the first season of SNL. What is SNL? Saturday Night Live. The Muppets appeared. So there was a crossover. And before you knew it, the Muppets, Sesame Street, these characters were the biggest thing since sliced bread. And I remember my family and I, we used to gather around the TV to watch The Muppet Show. And The Muppet Show was amazing because The Muppet Show is like El Hormiguero today. Some of the biggest celebrities in the world and they're interacting with puppets in funny sketches. And this is called The Muppet Show. If you can find episodes, it ran from 1976 to 1981. And we never missed a show. I remember one very well. There's one where Kenny Rogers was on the show. Kenny Rogers, the country music singer. And they're on a train and they sing The Gambler, the song The Gambler. But also they've done so many songs. They did Bohemian Rhapsody. And the crazy thing is, my mother grew up with these characters. I grew up with these characters. And now my daughter is growing up with these characters. And in the bonus episode, we'll take a look at the characters, some of their characteristics, and we'll learn and laugh 
as always. Unfortunately, Jim Henson lost his life. It's another way of saying he died. He lost his life on May 16th, 1990 in New York City. He was so young. He was 53 years old. He died due to something called streptococcal toxic shock syndrome and his body couldn't beat it and now he will live on forever through his characters which some of them he voiced and remember voice as both but also to voice es poner la voz in 1991 he got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and well deserved in 2011 he was named a Disney legend and again everybody knows who Jim Henson is and more importantly they know the characters he created I figured we could take a look at the song from Fraggle Rock no sé cómo va en español but we just learned some stuff from the Sesame Street song here's the Fraggle Rock one if you know it sing along in English it goes dance your cares away Worries for another day. So dance your cares away. Baila hasta que tus preocupaciones se largan. Dance your cares away. Worries for another day. Las preocupaciones para otro día. Let the music play. Que siga tocando o sonando la música. Down in Fraggle Rock. Down in Fraggle Rock. So what a great message. If you just listen to the lyrics, he was a guy who wanted to spread joy. He was a guy who never grew up. Okay, maybe physically, maybe he's his body. He became a grown-up or an adult, and he was extremely responsible. But in his heart, in his soul, he was a big kid. And aren't we all but as with everything in life, there are always naysayers. Naysayers are people who are doubting, who are saying, no, nah, not going to do it. It's not going to happen. They're called naysayers. This is an amazing story, and it's just shocking. In Mississippi, his home state, it was voted that Sesame Street be taken off the air because of its, and I quote, highly racially integrated cast of children. Basically, Mississippi wasn't ready for that. But that's his home state that said, oh no, we can't have this filth on the air. But thankfully, those were just a few odd opinions. It seems like the general consensus is that Jim Henson was a huge success. As of 2021, the show has won 205 Emmy Awards. I'm not talking about Jim Henson. I'm talking about Sesame Street, the topic of the podcast. 205 Emmy Awards. That is the highest award you can get in television. 11 Grammy Awards. Grammy is the highest award you can get in music. That is more than any other children's show. It has managed to stay relevant generation after generation. And there are young viewers in almost every corner of this globe. The show is aired in over 150 countries, and they even produce them locally in many countries. So there is no doubt that Sesame Street is a phenomenon, and we're gonna take a look at more fun facts and so much more in the bonus episode of FYI.